Can you imagine a world where your every move, every thought, every word is monitored by an omnipotent authority? A world where freedom is a mirage, a tantalizing illusion that lures you towards a bleak abyss of despair. This is the chilling reality of a dystopian world. Dystopian literature, a genre that explores the horrors of an oppressive society, serves as a mirror reflecting the dark corners of our world today. This brand of literature is not merely a figment of a writer's imagination but a commentary, a stark warning about the potential consequences of unchecked power and control. At the heart of this genre lies 1984, a classic dystopian novel by the visionary author George Orwell. Published in the mid-20th century, this novel paints a terrifying picture of a world under the iron fist of an all-seeing authority. Welcome to our deep dive into George Orwell's 1984, a chilling tale of a dystopian society. The first part of 1984 introduces us to Winston Smith, a man trapped in the oppressive regime of the party. We find ourselves in a world where freedom is merely an illusion, and oppression is the stark reality. This is Oceania, a dystopian society under the iron fist of the party, a totalitarian regime that exercises absolute control over every aspect of human life. The setting of the novel is just as important as the characters, as it breathes life into Orwell's dystopia. Oceania is a place where individuality is crushed, and conformity is the only path to survival. It's a world that's perpetually at war, where the past is constantly rewritten to suit the narrative of the present. The party's slogan, War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength, echoes throughout the society, a chilling reminder of the party's control. In this society surveillance is omnipresent and privacy is non-existent. The party watches every citizen through telescreens, listens to every whisper, and punishes any hint of rebellion. It's a world where Big Brother, the enigmatic and omnipotent leader of the party, is always watching you. This constant surveillance, coupled with the party's propaganda, instills fear and obedience in the minds of the citizens, effectively turning them into puppets of the regime. Censorship is another key theme that Orwell explores in 1984. The party controls all information, manipulating truth and rewriting history to maintain its power. The protagonist, Winston Smith, works in the Ministry of Truth, where his job is to alter historical records to fit the party's current narrative. This constant manipulation of truth is a potent tool of control for the party, as it creates a reality where the party is always right, and resistance is futile. Yet, in Winston we find a spark of rebellion. Despite the oppressive regime, Winston yearns for freedom and truth. He secretly despises the party and longs for a revolution. He begins to question the party's doctrines, a dangerous act of defiance that could cost him his life. In Winston we see a spark of rebellion, a glimmer of hope in this bleak world. As we delve deeper into 1984, we see Winston's rebellion take shape, fueled by his clandestine love affair with Julia. Julia is an intriguing character, a paradox within the confines of this dystopian society. She wears the guise of a party faithful, yet she embodies defiance, resistance and a glowing spark of the human spirit. Her rebellious nature, while not as intellectually inclined as Winston's is more daring, more physical and more immediate. She is the catalyst that ignites Winston's dormant spirit of revolt. Now let's talk about thought crime. Orwell presents it as the ultimate rebellion, the, the most dangerous act against the party. It's not just about deeds, it's about thoughts, desires, dreams. It's about the very core of human individuality. In this world, to think is to rebel, to love is to commit a thought crime. Winston and Julia's love affair is a thought crime, a silent revolt against the party, a testament of their refusal to be stripped of their humanity. This brings us to the theme of love. In this dystopian world, love is a radical act, a symbol of resistance. It's not just a feeling, it's a statement, a declaration of independence from the party's control. It's a beacon of hope in a world shrouded in fear. Winston and Julia's love is their rebellion, their way of reclaiming their stolen freedoms, their stolen identities. But their love is more than just a personal rebellion. It's a symbol of the human spirit, of its resilience, its refusal to be crushed, its eternal yearning for freedom. It's a testament to the power of human connection, of shared dreams, of mutual resistance against the forces that seek to dehumanize us. Yet the question remains, can love and rebellion truly flourish in such a world? Can they withstand the relentless onslaught of the party's oppression? Can they survive in a world where even thoughts are controlled, where love is a crime, where the human spirit is constantly under siege? 
These are the questions that Orwell compels us to ponder as we journey through the heart of 1984, but in a world ruled by the party, can love and rebellion truly flourish? In the gripping final part of 1984, we witness the crushing reality of the party's power. We've journeyed with our protagonist Winston Smith through his secret rebellion and his clandestine love affair. But this act of defiance doesn't go unnoticed. Winston is captured, setting the stage for a brutal illustration of the party's unyielding power. Winston's capture is not just about punishment, but about reformation. He is taken to the Ministry of Love, a chillingly ironic name. Here he is subjected to physical and psychological torture designed not just to break him, but to reshape his thoughts. This is the embodiment of the party's mantra. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Winston's tormentor O'Brien becomes the face of the party's power. He uses pain as a tool of manipulation, pushing Winston to the brink of his sanity. The objective? To make Winston accept even love, big brother. The party doesn't just want obedience, it craves devotion. It seeks to strip away individuality, to mold every citizen into a cog in its vast machine. The themes of power and manipulation are starkly evident in this part of the narrative. The party doesn't just control the external world, but also the internal world of thoughts and beliefs. It's a chilling vision of totalitarian control, where even the concept of truth is malleable, bent to serve the party's narrative. But perhaps the most chilling aspect is Winston's eventual submission. After enduring unimaginable torment, Winston finally breaks. He betrays Julia, the woman he loves and accepts the party's version of reality. His individuality, his defiance is extinguished. He becomes another face in the crowd, another loyal servant of Big Brother. In the end the party's control is absolute, its power unchallenged. This is the grim reality of Orwell's dystopia. A warning against the dangers of unchecked power and the loss of individuality. Orwell paints a picture of a world where freedom is the freedom to say that 2 plus 2 make 4, but if the party says otherwise, well, who are we to argue? More than seven decades after its publication, 1984 remains as relevant as ever. Let's consider the parallels between the dystopian world George Orwell painted and our modern society. One can't help but notice the striking similarities, especially in areas such as surveillance technology, the spread of disinformation, and the erosion of privacy. Orwell's big brother, ever watchful, is not far removed from the omnipresent nature of today's surveillance technology. We now live in a world where our every move can be tracked, our every word heard, and our every action recorded. Internet service providers, social media platforms, even our own smartphones, they all have the potential to play the role of Big Brother. It's a chilling reminder of Orwell's prophetic vision. Next, we encounter the concept of doublethink, a term coined by Orwell to describe the act of simultaneously accepting two mutually contradictory beliefs as correct. Today this is often manifested in the form of fake news. The digital age has made it easier than ever to spread disinformation, to manipulate facts, and to distort reality. The very notion of truth, much like in 1984, seems increasingly fluid and malleable. Finally let's touch upon the erosion of privacy. In 1984 the citizens of Oceania live under constant scrutiny, their private lives subject to public scrutiny. Fast forward to the 21st century and we see a similar trend. Our personal data, our preferences, our habits, all are routinely harvested and analyzed often without our explicit consent. Privacy, as we once knew it, is becoming a thing of the past. These parallels serve not only as a testament to Orwell's foresight, but also as a warning. They remind us to question, to challenge, to resist the encroachment on our freedoms. As Orwell's 1984 shows us, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. So, what can we take away from our deep dive into 1984? In our journey through this dystopian masterpiece, we've explored the bleak and oppressive world that Orwell so vividly paints. We've walked in the shoes of Winston Smith, experiencing firsthand the grim existence under Big Brother's watchful gaze. We've delved into the novel's poignant themes, from the chilling concept of doublethink, to the pervasive atmosphere of fear and control. We've also highlighted the enduring relevance of 1984. Orwell's cautionary tale resonates with us today, offering a stark warning about the potential consequences of unchecked power, surveillance, and the erosion of individual freedoms. In this digital age, where our every move can be tracked and recorded, 
1984 poses important questions about privacy, freedom, and the nature of truth. It's a book that invites us to reflect, to question, and to resist the allure of complacency. In the end, 1984 serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and the importance of freedom, a message that resonates deeply even today. Thank mm -hmm. you.